So finally, Plotquester decided to look at some plot. Hello fellow Plotquesters, it is I, Aaron the Plotquester, and today I got this awesome book, The Beast and the Bethany by Jack Megat Phillips himself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, 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 this is about a man named Ebenezer Tweezer. Ebenezer Tweezer, whatever, I don't care. And basically, he's, he's super handsome. And he seems to be young, except he's like 500 years old. What's the story behind that? Well, apparently, he met a little monster called the Beast. And the Beast would give him little gifts if he brought him stuff to eat. And the Beast eventually gave Ebenezer these nice, like, bottles that allowed him to live forever. Yeah, so basically, a elixir of life stuff going on here. And apparently, because of those things, um... He's immortal, basically. I mean, he's immortal to old age at the very least, anyway. And at the start of the book, we actually start off with the beast being fed. A talking parrot was only like seven of its kind left on the planet. And yeah, we all know how that story ends. Yeah, look, he, he's just been completely eaten, bro. Look at that. Ah, slime. Okay. And then now, the beast asks, um, the beast asks Ebenezer Tweezer, Ebenezer, hey, I want to eat a child now. I want to eat a nice, plump little child. Which is, okay. And Ebenezer's like, no, that's wrong. And for the first time in years, he feels a bit of moral conflict. However, finally, you know, he wants to be immortal and he really, really likes to be selfish because he's a selfish person. So he goes, okay, fine. I'll go ahead, and I'll find a girl that seems really, really horrible. Someone who seems really, really horrible, so that that person seems to be, like, deserve to get eaten. And that person that he picks up from the orphanage is Bethany. A really terrible, horrible girl, who's a bully, and very, very mean, and pranks everyone. And perfect. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just the worst. And so... Like, so basically, the beast goes like, oh, okay, she's fine, but I wanted a fat girl. So, why don't you fat it up for me? And of course, that's like, Ebenezer's like, uh, okay, fine, I'll deal with her for another, like, four days, I guess. And she, she does so. And through that process, he sort of becomes friends with the terrible, so-called terrible girl. Because she's actually not so bad, and... She seems to be a pretty good friend, and she he grows, like, fond of her. And finally, the beast goes, okay, now I don't need her. She looks fat enough, I think. And Ebenezer's is like, bruh, no, I don't want her anymore. And of course, the beast is super mad, and just, like, starts jumping down the enormous hell that Ebenezer got from, you know, giving gifts to the beast. And he's super rich, by the way, because the beast can, you know, make money. And it's just absolutely terrible. There's a huge crash, and all the stuff that the beast has made is getting controlled by the beast, and there's a huge battle. But Bethany says, hey, okay, you can eat me, but show me what you can do. And he goes, the classic, okay, and he makes the elixir. And she's like, eh, small, and he's like, he makes a couple more, and he's like, still small, and he's like, Sir. and he makes a huge bottle that's 80 years worth, and Bethany's like, okay. Now we're dunking, and she goes close up to him, and there's a little sprinkle wherever we went. Apparently, the beast is allergic to trumpets. Guess what Bethany's holding behind her as he as she walks forward to the beast's mouth? A trumpet. <laughs> that that's what she's holding, by the way, in case you didn't get the build up. And she shoves the trumpet into the beast's mouth before the beast can eat her, and the beast and it goes and shrinks and becomes this tiny little bug that screams at everyone and they, they th throw it in, in a little in a little bottle and they grab it and they yeah so it's, it's a tiny little worm thing now and it, its size is completely gone so finally it's a pretty much a happy ending however at the end this bird that's like the cousin of like the singing bird that that got eaten by the beast at the start of the book eats the beast, like the small little thing, and she goes, ah, that was a really weird tasting worm. Then, at the end, the, the bird's eyes turn black, 
and she says, I'm looking so looking forward to meeting Bethany again. Then her eyes go back to normal. And she's flying weirdly. What could that mean? And there's a second book, by the way. <laughs> so I'm going to read that very, very soon. So my overall thing is, I mean, it's not like the plot and stuff. It's pretty much all cliched. But that's the entire point of this sort of book. Because it's like Roald Dahl and David Wallings. It's like that modern fairy tale sort of style. Even Hansel and Gretel sort of similar to that even. And it's like... It deals, it's like this childish humor that you can only think of if you can think like a child, which is the gift of very few. And David Williams and Roald Dahl does that really, really well, and what's really, really done well. And this author does that in the same way as well. It's super nice the way he does it, and it just makes me feel a wave of nostalgia. Back to third grade when I first read James and Giant Peach, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. All of these iconic modern classics and it just brought me back to those days and also it deals with some more heavy scenes so honestly if I'm being honest here the best way I could describe this is if David Williams books and Roald Dahl books had a child and that child had a dark streak and decided to go goth that 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 is the best way to pretty much describe this book because it's like, it's a little more mature than at the actual Roald Dahl and David Williams books. It's more, it's a little more thriller related even. But at the moral conflict that's like, make the right choice, being a good person, not killing someone. Should I sacrifice myself for this girl? ETC, ETC. It's just like, yeah, it's just that all those factors are all moral conflict and teaches kids about moral conflict. And basically, those things aren't really present here. I mean, sure, there's a lesson. There's always a lesson in Roald Dahl and David Williams books. And sometimes really, really sad. But, but, they usually don't have these really slightly heavy themes of death and, like, what if, I don't know, moral conflict, like I just said. It's like the Macbeth style, like, oh, do I kill this person for my own selfish good? And Macbeth is just like, hell yeah, and kills everyone but in this book you know to making the right choice being selfless things like that and all of these things sort of combine and it teaches you a lesson and it's a bit dark of darker of a lesson than you know the past couple lessons here so that's why that's why i would like to just commend this book because it's it's like a darker streak rolled out book basically and it's and it's pretty like well written like humorous snarky and that childish vibe and that illustration style of Roald Dahl and David Walliams, all those things, all sorts of combined, and it's just a wonderfully tasting bug. It tastes like old old candy that I used to enjoy back in the back a couple of years back when middle school wasn't a thing, when high school wasn't a thing, when I didn't have to worry about pretty much anything except getting good grades when you know school's super easy. So it just it just reminded me back to those days, back when, back when there was an infinite liar, back when Roald Dahl, for me was the best author of all time. So it, I just just reminded me, and it, it made me feel really really happy. The nostalgia points, bro. And even for completely new readers, you can get that magical experience firsthand. So that's also really really good. But also it's like it's like super like super super hyped it's like oh it's a pre-ordered in like 16 countries and like blah, 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 blah. and yeah it's just i mean okay but it isn't that like i'm not saying it isn't a good book like i've emphasized quite a bit so far that it is a really really good book and it is quite like Roald Dahl, and it just makes you feel really, really nice. And there's a lot of good lessons and moral conflict that's sort of in there that make you think, huh, and in, in that situation, what would I do? Sort of thing, which is good for like third graders. But at the same time, uh, I don't really get why it's like this overhyped. Like, it's super, super, super overhyped. It's like, Oh, the uh, director of the Harry Potter um, movies are gonna direct, uh, like, a, I think, TV series for this. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But why is it this overhyped? Like, it isn't, like, David Wallings was hyped, but he wasn't this hyped. Like, 
what's so special about this particular like style of writing that's been done before and that wasn't this hyped suddenly this like super revolutionary completely new thing when it's when it's not really that uh, big of a new thing so that's the only thing that i'm sort of confused about because like reputation aside it is a good book but it isn't like a revolutionary new fantasy lord of children's literature it's it's good and it is commendable and it probably is one of the best like children's like fan novels chapter books that came out like pretty much so far though i'm pretty much not so far but like in recent years but like it's been done before and it's it's been done by damned volumes and it's been done by roald dahl before him and it's like he it's like they're it's like they're saying this is a completely new revolutionary thing like harry potter and like percy jacks they're like saying it's the next big thing when it's like it's the next big thing that came from the old big things that wasn't this hype so i don't really get that but otherwise like i said pretty much like a million times in this book really really good book good moral conflict good little breadcrumbs good chat plot line good humor good elements just a bit overhyped in my opinion but still pretty good book and like always, your plot cluster and the plot cluster really, really good. But I would highly recommend, even if you are like a middle schooler or high schooler like me, who's like Red Roll Doll in his elementary year, in your elementary years, just pick up this book and read it and feel the nostalgia and remember what it was like being super carefree. Because I'm sure you, it was one of those days when you were reading Roll Doll. Have a great day. Thank you.